In this lab, I'm going to take lab three, where we did our single page table based layout, and I'm going to duplicate this. and rename it. And we're going to make this lab eight. Okay, so let's go ahead and open it and see what we have. Now in the original one, all of my layout is here. There we go. I don't know why it was moving up correctly before. I'm going to close a bunch of these things right here. So I'm working with it clean. And then I'm going to open my index page again. Okay, so I've lost my images. So I may need to check and see. Ah, uh, they're updated but didn't get the rename. So I'm just going to Fix my links here. It's always nice to start. Make sure your images are still working. So I can click on each picture. And then you'll see I'm going into the source and making sure it's the local one, which is why we copied it over so it would have all of the images in it. So this is now pointing at my local images. Okay. So here I have my page. Now we can do this a few different ways. I could start the page completely over, which is probably what I'm going to do. Let's take a look at how it's set up. I basically have a header here. I have navigation here. And then I have an article with three sections and two pictures. And the easiest thing to do is actually going to be to start a new page. So I've got a header. My side is really in my footer section. So let's use some of the default. I basically have here a two column layout with a header and a footer. So I'm going to choose File, New, HTML, and we're going to choose HTML5. And we're going to use, depending on what you created, for mine I'm going to use a two column layout with a header and a footer. And I'm going to have my layout CSS I'll just go ahead and add that to the head because we're only going to have one page and it'll make it a little easier. And then I'm going to hit create. And I'm going to save this just as new.html. Once I've got it redone, we'll delete the other one. Now this is heavily commented and it tells you what to do. In fact, it has different sections here. You can see if I select one of these. This is a section. This is a section. This is part of my article. And I pretty much have a really similar layout. So I'm going to go through and adjust this back and forth. I'm going to close my tab group here because I don't need it. And I'm going to just start looking at my page. That's a little bit bigger. I made that one flexible. I made it, I think, set up at an 80%, but I'm using one that is set up. Let's take a look at our styles. Now I can get rid of the content in each of these. 
I have the sections here, but if I wanted to, I could pretty much get rid of all of this. And let's see, that is going to become, I don't really have a header for that, so let's just take this one piece at a time. I want to recreate the image with where it says Bouvier de Flanders. And so in my header here, I'm going to insert an image. So I want to go into 8, and that should be Eli. I'm going to open, and there he is. And then it's not going to be an exact match because I made this page larger and have it flexible. So here I'm going to have Bouvier de Flanders, and I can just copy that. Bring it over here and paste it in. Now, okay, so CSS is a little different on how we do layout, and I'm going to want to replicate this. So let's start looking at the CSS styles that are in place. And you can see all of the styles here and go through one at a time. So my background of my original one was black. We'll go back and forth. Yep, black. And then I think Yeah, I didn't have any borders or anything. I did leave a little bit of space up here. So we're going to go back here. I'm going to look at my CSS styles. And I can't remember. That was dark blue. If I want to look at my CSS styles here, it's 0, 0, 3 for the color. Okay. So let's just start looking with these one at a time. My headings, I can add a property or I can just go in and make, I can double click on these. And this is my favorite place to work with it. I can change my color to 003, the dark blue. And to make this a heading one. And one of the things that's gone on here, you can tell that this is underlined. It thinks that this is a link. And this is why you need to know how to read the code. Because what's happened here is that typically your logo is a link back to the front page. And this actually should just go directly into the page that I'm on. I want to save my index page, or save this as new. File, save as, new, and I want to make sure I'm in 8. And so I want to make sure that this goes locally to Eli, because I want the one in 8, and there we go. Okay, and so I don't need this alt text of insert logo here, I want to say Eli Bouvier A. Flanders. And it grabs the actual height and width, width so that's fine. Um, the ID should just be logo. Style. I don't want a style in here. So I'm going to delete that and that should make some changes. But I'm still, I still have this underlined because this is a link. And right now it's just a link to itself. And we can fix that by making that a link to what would be our home page, which here would be itself. I'm just going to delete it. It doesn't need to be a link at all on this page because it's just a single page. So now it's not a link. So let's go back and it needs to be blue and the background needs to be white. So let's look at our CSS styles again. I'll go ahead and go back to design view. And for the, I want to find my header. 
And I could change the background color right here or here. Background. I want this to be white. That's better. And then sidebar one. I want that background to be white. You can edit things right here. And it's floating to the right, and I want to float to the left. Okay, so you can see I'm starting to make these look the same. So I look at my container. It's 960 pixels. If I want to make it match exactly. I had it at 80%, which you can still do here. And then I want this. I'm going to have to add a new CSS style for me to make this work. So I'm just going to hit plus, and it's a compound selection, so it's H1 in the header inside the container. I'm going to hit OK. And I want the font size to be 2M. And I want the color to be 003. I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to hit OK. Now that didn't impact it because I don't think I've changed it. Yeah, that is heading one in the container. Container header H1. There we go. So it's the right color. Now I just need to worry about the alignment. So I'm going to double click on this again. And to do the alignment, I'm going to go into the box. I'm sorry, the block. And I want to do a vertical align of middle and a text align of center. And we'll see how that works. And it works OK except now Eli is centered as well and this is not lining up the way I want. To fix this, we're going to have to go back to our float. So I'm going to have to add another style. And so it's just going to be, I'm just going to do this H1 IMG, my images in my heading tag. And I'm going to have to play with this a little bit to get it exactly the way that I want. So I'm going to need to float it to the left and hit apply. And then I'm going to look at my box and I want to put a margin on this. And I want the top margin to be 15 and I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to hit OK. Now I've sort of made a mess of this because I've reflowed it by using the percentages. If I want to fix that, I need to make these percentages as well. And it's not staying in the header. So I need to go take a look at my header. And I need to set a minimum height for this. So I'm going to go into my box and set a height of 250 pixels and see what happens. I guess see what size Eli is. He's a little bit larger than that. So we're going to have to try 260. Three hundred. That sort of puts things back where they belong. Okay, so now We're going to hit OK here. Now this, I want to be aligned middle with this. So I'm going to have to play with my CSS for that as well. And there's a couple ways to do that. If I go into my box, or my block, middle alignment didn't work. Center alignment did. So what I'm going to want to do is go into my box and put padding on the top. And we're going to try 100 and hit apply. 
except that does padding to the whole thing here. So I want to cancel that. Command Z to undo. So what I want to do is just go into the... I'm going to have to look at the code because it shouldn't be applying this as part of the H1, but it is. So you have to be able to read the code. So now it should not tie those together. So let's go back in on that image. You want to put a margin on the left side for 15 pixels as well, I think. Let's see how we're coming. Well, I may not have the margins exact, but it's close enough. This needs to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to look at the header H1. Let's try 3M. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I want to put some padding on the top of this to get it where I want. I think it's actually going to be like 2.5 M. And then for my box, I want padding of, say, 75. Uh, maybe 100. Okay, so I'm going through and I'm repositioning things. That color is different. Oh, it's 009. Okay. That's why it doesn't look the way I want it to. CSS styles. And that one, you can just go in here and fix the number like that. Okay. So now my header pretty much matches. And you see, you don't really save a lot of time except that the layout for this will carry through. So now I'm going to want this nav bar to have links, appearance, temperament, history, and my first Bouvier. So let's work with that. So we're going to look at this nav bar. And it doesn't have to be exact. Just give yourself the same general feel. I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to go into my CSS styles. And I should have I want to look at my nav and I want to get rid of those colors. So I'm looking at each of these. I want those all to be white. And I don't want it to change to green later. Because it'll give it a hover effect. Sort of like a button, but not really what I'm going for. So let's look at again what I have here. Appearance, temperament, history, my first movie. So we can go ahead and I accidentally closed it. So again, it was appearance, temperament, history, my first movie. I'm going to make this really flow the same. Let's take a look at my footer here for a second. should be able to just copy this. Right there. And then I should be able to go into my CSS styles, look at the footer. That done. 
if I want to go into my page tags here, that should be 009. Oh, and I want some padding. Let's see. Oh, my stuff in the paragraph. This is not in a paragraph format. That's why I'm not getting the format that I want. There we go. And I want my body color should be black. Let's see, do I redefine paragraph somewhere here? Okay, so let's just take a little walk through here. Um, we have the heading one, heading image, content. We can figure out what's going on with each of these. Okay, my article is my content. All right, so let's look at the content here. And we want to make the, instead of being 780 pixels, we want to make it 80%. And we want to make the sidebar twenty percent. Okay, so we've got the footer, we've got the sidebar. I could go through and change the link colors on here and would if I was trying to make it exact. doesn't need to be. So what I need now is sections in here with my images. So I'm going to have to take a look at how I have this set up. So I've got a section with an image here, then I have basically two sections there. Let's take a look at how it's set up on this page. So I'm going to delete that, delete that. I'm currently in the article content. And what I want to do is insert a layout object of a div. It's not letting me do just the article. So let's take a quick look. And this again, I'm getting article content should exist here. And it does. We have a heading here. That's fine. What I'm going to want to do is put some sections in here. And it's not letting me just add them. So I'm going to actually have to type in a start and end of a section. So this is section. And inside it, we're going to make it an ID of, it should be semantic, so appearance, ID equals appearance. And inside the section, I'm going to copy my content. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to copy all this, including my anchor. And I want to make sure that I'm in the section ID. So that's selected. And Let's go back to design view. Okay, so that's not bad. And I want to put an image in over here. So I'm going to insert my image, and that one should be Nessie. And I'm just going to put a Nessie as the alternate text. 
And what I need to do is I need to do a CSS style. And I'm going to actually create a class. Float right. And what we want to do is get into the float right. And then we're going to put a height for this box, which I want to make a little bit larger. So we'll just do that by doing padding. And we're going to say we've got 20 padding all the way around. Let's see what happens. We now need to apply that class. That's not bad, except I want her to be up here. So let's see how that looks compared to our original page. It's not exact, but I'm okay with it. All right, so I'm going to need another section underneath that one. And we need to take a look at what I have here. So this section, I'm going to make two sections and put this image in the first section and set this one to 55% and this one to 45%. So I'm going to have section ID, temperament, and history. And now I'm going to have to go to format them. So I need to add these. When I add these, I'm going to add an ID. So I'm going to do the ID for temperament. And what I really need to do here is get into the box. It needs to float left, and it needs to be set to a width of, I think I said 55%. And I want 5 for padding. Up at the right, I want 15. And I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to hit OK, and that gives me this little position right here. So I'm going to go back to design view purely, come over here and grab my temperament information. And this should be my temperament section. And now I want to put my image in here. So I'm going to insert my image, which was Eli. And we're just going to put that in as Eli. And then I'm going to have to have him float to the right. So I'm going to use my content. So he's so the container's floating left, but he's going to need to float right. And I'm okay with that. And then I need to have another section right here, which I've created and just need to format, and I need to make that history. Mm -hmm. 
So I need to go into my um, CSS styles and add a new one for ID and make it history. And I need to set up the width for this. Yeah, 45%. And we'll have it float left to butt up against my other one. Oh, I think I got them too close together. Okay, so we're going to make it 42%. Okay. And so in there, and that should look pretty close. So I'm going to go take a quick look at it in the live view. Not identical. I could go through and keep formatting size and color so that it was black and bold. Um, one thing I would want to do here, I'm going to take it out of live view, is make each of these links go to a spot on the page. So appearance would go here, temperament would go here, history would go here. Oh, and this is why I ran into two IDs because I've got the ID for the Anchors. So that's why you're seeing history too. That's okay. And I don't think I got that selected right. My first VBA select, and that goes here. So history should go to history, temperament to temperament, and appearance to appearance. And it put two on all this, so I didn't duplicate because you only allowed one ID. So now I should be able to test this in Firefox. It's not identical, but it's pretty close. Oh, it's my mouse over is making it disappear. Got to watch that. So I'm going to have to, it doesn't have a title. Okay, so I'm going to have to come over here and I'm just going to have to say Mary's Bouvier's. And I'm going to have to look at my mouse overs on my navigation. want that to be blue. And then we want the color to be let's undo that. That's a background color. We want color to be blue. And we'll test it again. Okay, so the mouse over is now blue. I'm happy with that. Okay, so again, it's not identical. I could keep going, but I think this has been a pretty long lecture anyway. But it's pretty close to that one. I'd have to go through and finish formatting the colors, but you've seen how to do that. So that takes a table layout and converts it to a CSS layout. I think generally it's better to start with a complete redesign rather than to try and make something look like something else in CSS, but you can pretty much replicate it. Table design is a little faster initially, but the thing is once I had the CSS done, I could have 50 pages all formatted the same way, and this is also semantic and it's the correct way to do it. So this is how it's done in CSS, as opposed to the table format. So you should recreate yours, and you don't have to make it an exact match. Take the same content from your first page and do a new CSS layout if you'd like. You don't have to make it an exact match, but do a CSS 
layout with the same content that you did for lab three.